section 4.3. We are going to use geometry to find the area underneath the curve. Okay, so you need to remember what the areas of certain figures are. The area of a rectangle, which we talked about yesterday, was base times height. The area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. And the area of a trapezoid might be the one that you don't remember. equals one half the height, base one plus base two. Remember the bases of your trapezoid are the parallel sides. Okay, so what we're going to do today is just use these geometric shapes to find the area underneath the curve. So, our first example is f of x equals 4. We want to find the area underneath the curve between 1 and 3. So, I am just going to sketch a graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, it's a horizontal line. If I am only looking at it between 1 and 3, that means this area right here, the area underneath the curve between 1 and 3, what shape does that make? Yes, it is a rectangle. The area of a rectangle is base times height. So the base length here is 2, the height is 4. So what is the area going to be underneath the curve of 4 between 1 and 3? The problem will look like this. Notice I've added numbers to the bottom and the top of your integral symbol, the integrand. And in this case, it is going to be 8 because it is just the shape of a rectangle. Okay, let's look at another one. If our function is x plus 2 on the interval between 0 and 3, I am going to sketch a graph. x plus 2 is a line that goes through 0, 2. My slope is 1, so I go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. See, I'm off a little bit there. It's a line that looks like this. If I'm looking at it between 0 and 3, the area underneath the curve between 0 and 3 is going to be this shaded portion right here. What shape is that? Well, it is a trapezoid. So my problem is the integral of x plus 2 dx between 0 and 3. I can find that area by using the area of a trapezoid. 1 half the height, base 1 plus base 2. My height in this case is this length here. So this is 3. My bases are the parallel sides. So the length of my first base is 2. The length of my second base is what I get when I plug in 3. So this coordinate right here is 3, 5. So the height of my second base is 5. So the area between 0 and 3 of x plus 2 is 3 halves times 7, or 21 halves. Okay, you can only use this method if it is a geometric shape that you know the exact area of. 
We will do one more example. f of x equals the square root of 4 minus x squared on the interval from negative 2 to 2. The graph is a semicircle with a radius of 2. So it looks like this. The area underneath the curve between negative 2 and 2 is everything there, which is a semicircle. So our equation looks like this. The area of a semicircle is 1 half pi r squared. My radius in this case is 2. So 2 squared is 4 divided by 2 is 2. So my answer is going to be 2 pi. A couple of other things I'd like to mention are a couple rules. If you are going to take the integral of a function from A to A, in other words, you don't go anywhere from 1 to 1 or 2 to 2, you're asking what is the area under the curve from 1 to 1, what hasn't gone anywhere? So that answer will always be 0. The lower number, A, is always on the bottom of an integral. So A is the smaller number. If you mess up and you write it as the integral from B to A, these two integrals will be equal if you multiply it by a negative. Okay, so how are we going to work these out algebraically? To do this, it is called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. I think that's important. I hope you think so. Okay, so the fundamental theorem is the integral from a to b of f of x dx, and to work this out, when you integrate it, you end up with a larger case f. We're going to plug in b and then subtract what we get when we plug in a. So let's do an example. The integral from 1 to 3 of negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 dx. This is called a definite integral. It's definite because there's values at the bottom and the top of the integrand. The other integration method where you have to add the plus c is just an integral, not a definite integral. So when we look at this problem, we are talking about the area underneath the curve of that function. Now, we know that that is an upside-down parabola. There is no geometric shape that fits exactly underneath that parabola. So we cannot use our geometric method. So to find the exact answer, we will integrate, add 1, divide by the same thing, Put a bracket. Now I am going to, this is the f of b minus f of a part. I am going to plug in 3. Let's just make that 2. And subtract what I get when I plug in 1. Okay, so now you're just going to number crunch. I plugged in 3. 3 cubed is 27 divided by 3, so I have negative 9. Plus 18 minus 9. Use parentheses to 
to make this work. So I have minus one third plus two minus three. So nine minus nine is negative 18. So I have zero minus, and then I have negative one third minus one. So this is going to be minus negative one third minus three thirds. So negative four thirds times the negative gives us an answer of four thirds. So the area under the curve of this function between one and three is four thirds. Let's look at that on our calculators. So I'm gonna type this function in. looking at it between 1 and 3. You can see the little area that we're referring to. Now I can go second, calculate, choice number 7. Lower limit, limit means my A value. Type it in. My upper limit means the B value, which is 3, so I type it in. It shades it and it gives you the answer. So you can check your answers using your calculator. If we use the rectangle method, that would just be an approximation. There is no geometric shape that fits exactly underneath that curve. And that is my exact area. Okay, that concludes our video. I'll see you in class tomorrow.